Hey everyone, Chris here with another filler video. And today, it's time to once and for all end the ambiguity about how the Doom Engine works. Before I begin, I should probably say that I myself have made incorrect assumptions about the Doom Engine in the past, which has ended up repeated in my videos regarding Doom Engine games. These assumptions are mostly thanks to early knowledge of the engine, way back when it was still new, where book authors and level authors were getting the details of this thing either partly wrong or completely wrong. Thus, it's time to do proper research and figure this all out so that people can stop arguing about it. Mind you, I imagine people will still argue about it all the same, but oh well. First, let's get a common misconception out of the way. Is the Doom Engine a Raycaster? Short answer, no. Although the algorithm to render to the screen kinda works like one, although only in how textures are stretched. As to the long answer, well, it's understandable why people think it's a raycaster. The Doom Engine is actually more tuned to a scanline renderer, although even that's not a completely accurate description, since Doom only draws walls in this manner, and everything else is rendered via other methods. But then if Doom is a form of a scanline renderer, why does it have similar limitations to a raycaster? I mean, you can use the scanline rendering process to rasterize a fully 3D environment, right? Well, yeah, you could, and in fact the Quake engine works this way to an extent. But Doom takes a massive number of shortcuts in order to conserve rendering power, since doing a full 3D scene was beyond the scope of what id was aiming for, plus the typical home computer of the time simply wasn't going to be even remotely powerful enough to run such a thing. For starters, let's talk about the actual process of how Doom goes from raw level data to first person view. The process works in four stages. The first stage is to sort the BSP tree data based on the player position to determine the draw order of all visible walls and vis planes. Now for those underwear, the raw level data in Doom isn't actually used when rendering the level. Instead, each level has been pre-compiled down into various pieces and stored in a binary space partition tree. I won't bore you with the details of this process, but basically, the level's raw data is split in two, then each of those sections is split in two again, and again, and again, until ultimately you're left with a tree of subsectors, which you can trace through to determine what's visible from various parts of the level without having to measure anything or do tons of calculations. Because of this, and because the level data is only two-dimensional, this explains why walls can't move sideways, only up or down, because the up or down positioning is handled on the fly, it isn't a part of the actual wall data. Once the BSP tree data is sorted based on the player position, the next task is to render all visible solid walls and to calculate vis planes along the way. This is actually done from front to back, contrary to what you might expect. The reason it's done this way is that, because of how the levels are made and the limitations of a 2D level structure, there aren't any special cases where you would need to render a solid wall behind one that you've already rendered. In fact, if something's screwy with the level design and this happens, you may see a glitch where a solid wall will appear to render entirely inside another solid wall, since both are getting rendered completely, but one's getting rendered first, possibly the closer wall, does that happens. Each wall in sequence then has its angles relative to the player calculated, and then is simply scanned into the screen space as vertical columns of pixels, with appropriate calculations used to determine the height of each column of pixels, and both texture stretch and repetition. This is a part of the reason why there's a misconception of this game using a ray casting system, since in a ray caster like Wolfenstein 3D, you would use a very similar algorithm to render the walls except you base the height of your columns on how far each ray from the player is able to reach, as well as the angle that it's been sent along. Though the walls are being rendered, viz planes are also being generated. This is an infamous aspect of the Doom Engine, for a reason we'll get into in a minute. Viz planes are essentially floors and ceilings, but the way this works is that each floor and ceiling is split into multiple viz planes during rendering to ensure they don't get drawn over top of walls. When this process fails, you'll see floors or ceilings render right over top of walls, or possibly even expand into infinity, as the rendering algorithm for viz planes is only limited by the boundaries set when rendering the walls. Thus, if a wall fails to render and the viz plane isn't set properly, you'll get this effect instead of a hall of mirrors. However, viz planes are infamous because Doom originally had a very small limit as to how many could be generated at once, and if the viz planes limit was exceeded due to a complex scene being drawn, the engine would crash to DOS saying that there's no viz planes left. 
Typically, you wouldn't be able to trigger this with the levels made for the game, as the guys at id knew the limitations of the engine they were making and worked within them. However, once users were able to make their own levels, this limit rapidly became apparent, frustrating level designers to no end and limiting the complexity of their designs. There are ways to get around the visplane's limit, such as tying multiple isolated sectors into the same sector, provided they all share the same height data and lighting, but this can create additional problems if you're not careful. But once the actual shape of the level is drawn to the screen, next come the sprites and transparent walls, referred to as things by the engine. This is actually the least efficient part of the whole process, since if you have a dozen sprites standing in front of each other, all 12 of them are going to be rendered fully, thus resulting in some of the same pixels being written 12 times in a row before an actual frame is displayed on screen. Unlike the walls, which are rendered front to back, things are rendered back to front because of the potential for transparencies in the sprites. And then, what's left when all that's done? Nothing. You have a completed scene rendered on your screen. Well, okay, status bars and the player's weapons still need to be drawn, but that's easy stuff in contrast to everything else the engine just went through. Now, the interesting thing about the Doom engine is that many aspects of it would follow through into Quake, such as the use of BSP trees. Quake, being a fully 3D game, would instead use polygonated objects to represent things like doors and moving platforms, and would have numerous optimizations in place for things like lighting and such. But beyond that, still had fixed level structures just like Doom due to the use of BSP trees. Now there are a couple of other misconceptions to keep in mind too. One common argument you'll sometimes hear is that Doom can't be a raycaster because of its use of BSP trees. But it's more accurate to say that it can't be a raycaster because of how it implements BSP trees. A BSP tree is ultimately just a structure you parse through to determine what smaller aspects branch into what larger aspects or vice versa, thus saving you tons of processing time on the fly. If Doom did indeed do raycasting, a BSP tree with appropriate data in it could still be helpful in determining things like the limits of the rays which were casted. The other argument you hear is simply a result of people confusing ray casting with ray tracing. The two processes are very similar, except that ray tracing is essentially an evolution of ray casting into something far more complex. What it really boils down to, though, is that ray casting only involves a single ray per rendering element, be them individual pixels, or in the case of games like Wolfenstein 3D, entire columns of pixels. Ray tracing is when each ray you send out has its own properties, which change as it bounces off of objects, reflecting, refracting, diffusing, and ultimately reaching a light source in order to color the pixel it's meant to. You're tracing the path of the rays to light through complex processes in order to determine the pixel colors. Ray casting is simply one piece of the process of ray tracing. Anywho, hopefully this clears up some of the confusion regarding how the Doom engine works. Seeing as this mistake made it into at least one of my videos on the Doom Engine games, I'll have corrections posted up on those videos soon enough, both in the additional information sections on my website, as well as annotations in the videos themselves. As for episode 166 of Ancient DOS Games coming out on Saturday, July 4th, in celebration of the American Independence Day, despite the fact I'm Canadian, I'll be taking a look at an old game featuring a great American pastime. And there's quite a few games this could be, so I guess I'll get you guys another hint here in that this game spawned a huge number of sequels in the years following. If you think you know which game that could be, then send your guests to adg at pixelships.com and stay tuned as there's plenty more DOS games to get to.